thank you everyone for coming. We're gonna um, wait just a minute or two. We need to wait for our presenter to join. We're gonna watch for her. So any, anyone who notices Lisa Landis. I'm here. Oh, you're here, Lisa? Oh, there you are, Lisa. <laughs> um, okay, well, I say we just go ahead and get started. Um, again, thank you everyone for coming to our lead presentation for the Cancer Center. This is about the new um, family, F-A-M-L-I, and FML process. And Lisa's just going to um, go into details about how the program works, what it is, and then leave reporting. So yes. I'll go ahead and you can share your screen and go ahead and get started. Awesome. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> I want to thank everyone. Um, if you've been working with us and the patience and grace you've extended, um, I will share some stats um, after the presentation just to um, kind of let you know where we are. Um, I want to give an overview presentation, and then we can go into kind of um, a little bit more uh, details and questions if you have them. I'm happy to um, answer anything that you might have. So um, as Kim mentioned, this is um, Family Medical Leave Insurance Act. Um, this is <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> something that the Colorado voters voted in in 2020. Um, and so uh, they've taken a few years to develop what this would look like and rolled it out. Um, January 1 of 2023, we all began paying premiums. 0.45% of your wages have been coming out of your paycheck for the last year. And if you see on your W-2 this year, there is a family um, notation that shows how much you paid into family. That is not anything of how you've used it because you couldn't use it last year. It is what you paid in. Um, and then departments are paying the other 0.45% to make that total of 0.9%. So um, on May 10th, we did apply for a family plan and get that approved, I'm sorry, a private plan. Um, we had the ability to um, kind of opt out of the state and do a private plan of our own. Um, it has to be pretty much the same or better than the state plan. So there's not a lot of flexibility, but the ability for us to self-administer and self-fund this plan, um, really um, the analysis showed that this would be a really good thing for um, CU. So um, then on November 27th, our application process opened and January 1, the program started and everyone could begin taking leave for a lot of different options. So um, how this works, it's complicated math. Um, it's based on your weekly wages. And so every person on this call is gonna have a slightly different percentage because we all make slightly different amounts. And so it, it's very individualized. And so that's why um, the complexity is here and how we're administering this. And so you can see here that if you um, are making 104, um, you know, annualized wage there, um, you're going to be capped at that $1,100 per week. And that is 55% of your salary. So basically family is going to pay 55% um, each week. What that means is the 45% um, is hanging out there where you could use sick, vacation, paid parental leave, or other leaves to make whole, to get to that 100% time. So if you really think about how family works, it is um, providing a lot of things, but it's, it's, it's allowing you to extend the time you have with sick and vacation, so you're not burning through as fast. As you can see, um, the higher you earn, the less percent family is going to cover because it does cap at that $1,100 a week. So again, if you're, um, you know, 156, family's only going to pay that 37% and the rest of that percent would require you to use sick and vacation to get to 100. So very um, specific to the individual. And um, we do have our case managers who are um, working through that with individuals to understand their um, individual case. So um, eligibility, this is eligible Anyone who lives and works in Colorado um, is eligible to take family and has to pay into it. And so while we're really good at providing leave and benefits to our faculty and staff, and we've done that for a long time, um, this new law applies to student employees, graduate students, GME, our temp faculty, it, it expanded to anybody. And so, you know, it's really, um, that's been a challenge because again, we don't normally provide a lot of protection or leave for this these groups. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me, all the employees are eligible for family payments on day one of employment. 
And then they receive that job protection. So what um, Family Medical Leave Act, the federal Family Medical Leave Act has given um, the 12 weeks of job protection, family also gives that at 180 days of employment. And so, you know, again, that's different. So we've never really had job protection for our student employees because they've not worked the minimum requirement for FMLA. And now we do. So again, if you're um, looking to, you know, uh, hire, um, discipline, and then maybe terminate a student employee who's on and using this leave, now there's a, a legal complexity in there. So we just have to be mindful of that. Um, and then, um, as I mentioned, family is 12 weeks of that partial wage replacement, and that replenishes every 12 months. And so um, that is, it works just like our family medical leave. And then on January 1, we reset the FMLA to be um, uh, consistent with family. And so we restarted that on January 1. So now, regardless of what someone took in 2023, on January 1, 2024, basically, there's 12 weeks available for them under FMLA and family. Um, the only exception to that is classified staff, and they will have two calendars because we have to follow the state um, program for them. So the leave application is open. Um, it's been you know, open since November through the CU employee portal, uh, this tile. You can find it by navigating multiple places. Our website has a lot of information um, and how to's uh, to do this. <clears throat> And then people will apply for various reasons. And so if you're familiar with the Federal Family Medical Leave Act, the top three make, uh, you know, are, are, are familiar to you. So caring for your new child, um, birth, adoption, or foster care within the first year um, of either the birth or the placement of the adoption or foster care. Um, caring for a family member with a serious health condition or caring for yourself with a serious health condition. So those three remain similar. Um, and then the other two were added to the Colorado law, and that is to make arrangements for a family's military deployment um, and then to obtain um, how, safe housing for um, domestic violence, stalking, sexual assault or sexual abuse. So um, a, a lot of expanded uh, definitions there for reasons why people can take this leave. I wanna highlight the second bullet because it's caring for a family member with a serious health condition. Under the Family Medical Leave Act on the federal side, it's very narrow definition. So it's parent, spouse, or child, and the expanded definitions of each of those. However, um, the Colorado family law really increased this. So we have child, parent, spouse, domestic partner, which again, um, is under that definition of spouse, but they've added grandparent, grandchild, siblings. And then this last sentence, um, anyone who you have a significant personal bond. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> excuse me, that's um, opens up, you know, the, the, your relationships to really um, think about that. And so we asked the state for some clarifying um, language and they are using this. So familiar relationships are gonna look at the totality of circumstances. So it could be shared financial responsibilities, emergency contacts, um, expectation of care, and then cohabitation or geographical proximity. We do get questions. Could I take care of my neighbor? If they met some of these, again, geographical proximity, things like that, we, we would have a hard time saying no. However, we do require a medical certification. So you're gonna be have to be close enough to your neighbor that they provide you the medical certification so that we can have that. So there has to be a fairly close relationship where you would share that information with somebody. So again, we do require medical certification for this leave, um, just like in family medical leave. Um, so, you know, that's, it's, people are used to doing this. Um, we just wanna highlight that the medical person, uh, Paperwork is held outside of the personnel file um, and is considered highly confidential. Um, we don't share the um, medical certification or um, anything about the medical diagnosis with um, your supervisors, with the um, department. It really is held within the leave team. And, um, and so we just wanna highlight that. I think that um, that's always a question. Um, we have, um, the medical certifications, what your supervisors and HR contacts will know is that someone's been approved for a certain leave 
um, a certain time, all of the, the details around that, but not why. Um, of course, employees are able to share their medical diagnosis with anybody they choose, um, including their supervisor. And again, that's a real um, personal um, decision uh, based on your relationship with them. So um, we have a lot of lead programs at CU, and they all interact in different ways. And so um, part of doing a centralized um, team for this new program um, not only just because there's that financial component, but um, all of these leaves interact with each other. And so we are requiring an application for all family, FML, and parental leave cases. And so that application is through that tile. Um, um, once the application is submitted, basically a leave coordinator is going to review all the eligibility of all the leaves that we have at CU. Understand the desire of the employee. So um, the difference with this law is it really put a lot of um, control back for the employee. And so, you know, I could say I want to maximize my pay for the time that I have off, or maybe I need to maximize my time off and I will take a reduced amount of pay. Um, some of our prior policies did not allow people to do that. You couldn't um, take leave without pay, without exhausting sick leave, things like that, where now family has really opened this up and the, um, the, the control is with the employee and they get to share what they want to do. And so with all that information, they'll construct a leave plan that will then be shared with the supervisor and department HR um, to understand what the time off is needed and what the employee is requesting. Um, if an employee is already on FML um, and it crossed over the new year, we are asking for an application to be completed for um, to use family. Um, they can continue on their FML and we had a lot of cases transferred to us, which is great, but we can't utilize family without um, that application. So as I mentioned, some other leave programs, we have the federal um, FMLA, uh, we have our CU parental leave, we have short-term disability programs, of course, we have our sick vacation holidays and then on the job injuries. These all have a very specific interaction with family and um, some of them go together and some do not. And so we really, um, you know, are trying to understand how all this layers together. I will say short term disability right now is one we're trying to continue to figure out. We're working with our vendor. Um, they have lowered our rates starting on January 1 for all employees because they realize they're not going to be paying out as much because of family. So it's very interesting. So all of a sudden, short-term disability, we're gonna pay a lot less to, to carry it, but you're, we're also not gonna get as much from them. So um, again, really continuing to work with that and um, we'll get a lot more information out as um, all of the carriers, um, have more information. So I wanted to do two examples. This is parental leave. Um, and so you can, it's a lot of words on here. We are very excited. We were able to um, update our CU parental leave again to um, work with family, but there's some great things that came out of that. And so really looking at this university staff and 12 month faculty, because I think that's uh, more applicable to um, your department. Um, the first six weeks, so we were able to change our CU parental leave policy to say there are the first six weeks of leave are paid at 100% time. That 100% time is paid between family and the CU parental leave, the paid parental leave. So um, in the past, we only had four weeks of 100% pay, and now we have six. And so that was a, a nice um, bonus there that we were able to do. We also eliminated the one-year wait. Um, on our CU parental leave policy, we always, you had to be here for 12 months and we were able yes. to, um, yes. to limit that uh, or to eliminate that clause. And now it's um, effective on day one, just like family. So the way this would work is uh, the first six weeks, um, you would receive full pay. And again, on the back end, that's being paid between family and paid parental leave. The next six weeks, so week seven through 12, um, family would pay that portion, that partial wage replacement. So whether that's 55%, 37%, anything else. And then you could use sick and vacation to get to 100% compensation on that. Um, CU's parental leave policy is actually 26 weeks of unpaid leave. And so after um, weeks 12, 
anything from 13 to 26 weeks, you would be using your sick vacation or leave without pay to for that remainder. So, um, so that's kind of what it looks like. Um, again, we, we were able to make some good progress on that. Um, the other um, grouping here is all other employees and CU does not provide par parental leave for those employees. However, now they are eligible for family. So they would receive that partial wage replacement for that 12 weeks. Um, and again, that's just not a population that we were able to give parental leave to, um, but now they have at least some compensation during the time. Family for all other cases instead of parental looks a lot cleaner on the screen. However, it's usually a little bit more complicated because um, we're talking about, you know, more intermittent leave. People are taking, um, you know, a week off a month for treatments or things like that. And so um, it is just partial wage replacement for any time that you've taken off and sick and vacation can be used to get to 100%. So that's how basically it works together. Um, we are encouraging employees to apply. We have a lot of departments and supervisors who want to do the right thing by their employee and just kind of under the table, just take the time off. We'll handle it, we'll figure it out. What we want to make sure everyone knows is that if that's happening, um, they're not utilizing that family entitlement and every employee is entitled to use family. So if you allow someone to say, just take this, you know, two weeks off, figure everything out without applying to family and FML, they're not using that time. And they are still, if they come to us and apply, they will have 12 weeks um, able to use for family. So again, we're trying to get um, employees to apply to make sure that everything is running uh, concurrently um, when able to. So that is a quick um, overview of the program. And um, I'm going to stop sharing. And I saw some questions that came in. Um, I've addressed a lot of them, but um, I just want to confirm that I did answer. So, um, for the, if someone, someone can choose to not, to only re use the family leave and not report any sick or vacation. Um, I knew they didn't have to report vacation, but can they also choose not to use their accrued sick leave as well? They absolutely can. So they can choose to just take the family portion and be leave without pay for the remaining. Um, time. Okay. And then I have a question when, with, with a paid parental leave, does the leave team then send a, a monthly report? So I have someone on, you know, parental leave and we, we turned in the time for January using family and paid parental leave. Do we then receive a report in February of what's remaining? Who keeps track of that? So um, we can, um, but we can also look at the payroll registers, um, right, to see the codes that are used um, for each employee to see what they, how many hours they've used. Um, uh, and then in April, we have new technology that's rolling out. We, we purchased a new technology. We had to do it in phases based on when we could sign our contract. Um, so we have the first phase in the second phase will be in April and that will allow employees, supervisors and department HR to be able to see into our system. And so that's going to allow that transparency of a supervisor could go in and see how much time someone had taken and how much time they have remaining. And same with the employee and the department. So all of that um, will be rolled out um, in later in the spring. Um, I will double check to see if there's any kind of reporting mechanism that's going to come out. Okay. And then I want to address um, Carlo's question of um, when you go on parental leave, does your leave get automatically reported? Um, Carlo, I am asking that when people do go out on leave, they meet with me in person. I will review how to turn your time in on your my leave calendar. I will show you how to do it. And I'm asking that employees take care of their own leave reporting after they have met with me um, to show you how. Um, and I don't know if Lisa, do you want me to just explain how the leave is reported? Because I do understand it now. Sure, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, so what everyone receives when you apply for a leave, you receive a leave approval letter from the leave team. And then following that, you receive a leave plan, which is a separate PDF document. And it shows what percent of your leave is covered by family and what percent 
you can then use your supplemental leave, which is your accrued sick and vacation to cover the balance. So for example, I call it a multiplier and it's at the bottom of your letter. Say your multiplier is 30%. When you're reporting your leave in my leave, all you need to report. So let's say you took eight hours of, of leave for a particular day. You would get a calculator out and do eight hours times 0.3. And I, I'll show you exactly how to do this when I, when I meet with you. You then only need to turn in that, you know, 30% of eight hours of your accrued leave. The leave team on their end will be reporting the other 70% using a family um, code and a speed type. I'm assuming they use their own speed type as well. So our speed types, only are paying for the 30% that your accrued leave is covering. So you're using a lot less leave. It's gonna be a, a weird percent that's gonna show up on your timesheet, a weird decimal, and then the leave team reports the rest of it. And did I get that right, Lisa? Yes, that is correct. So the leave usage report, we take that, we're looking at all the allotments, we're reducing your FMLA, your family, parental leave, things like that. And we're also then basically docking regular pay and paying the family portion. So if you don't report the additional time that Kim explained, it's been docked. And so you would not get paid unless you put that in that, yes, I want to use sick or vacation or things like that. So um, yes, it was perfect the way you explained it. That dock would occur the following month since we turn leave in the following month. Correct. So we are closing our February payroll today. Actually, it closes in seven minutes. So everyone's feverishly working to make sure everything's correct. But we are processing the time that everyone took off in January um, for this payroll. So, And then the, what if you work alternate schedules for 10s or 980s? You will go in. Um, I just did this with somebody, Savannah, and we will look at your My Leave calendar. And if you worked, you will report on the what do you call that form, Lisa? The leave usage that you report to the leave team. You will put your full, if you work 10 hour days, you put 10 hours each day on that leave report. That's 100% of the leave you took. And then when I meet with you, we look at your leave calendar and we, we multiply 10 hours a day times whatever your own multiplier is. So um, I follow whatever your schedule is and um, report it just like that in my leave using that multiplier. I hope that explained, um, hope that is clear. And then let's see. If you run out of sick and vacation, can disability be used with family? And that one Lisa will need to address. Sure, and so short-term disability, our CU policy has some interesting things in it and we are reviewing that now, but for right now, <clears throat> it has some, um, Limitation. So you have to exhaust your sick leave. There has to be a 30 day waiting period. And um, and then basically fam they're always going to offset their payment by what you would have available for family. So um, you're never going to be able to use short term disability to make whole or, or get to that 100 percent because they're always going to reduce it by the amount you would have gotten from family. Um, that's where we're working with our vendor to make sure that everything is in line. And so if you were out of sick and vacation, disability can be used, but it, it's used concurrently with family. And you're only going to get a smaller portion because family is going to pay, let's say, 1100 a week and your disability is only up to 15. So they're going to pay the difference of that four hundred dollars a week. And so um it, it will, you can't use short-term disability to get to that hundred percent, I guess is where I'm going. If you're out of sick and vacation time. Okay. Carlo asked, well, we need to report even during the initial six weeks. Yes. You need to report all of your leave. And again, I will meet with you to show you how to do that. But from day one, um, I'm holding employees responsible to turn in their own, my leave timesheets. And it's the only people that have access to those special codes are you as the employee and me, your supervisor does not have access to those codes. So your supervisor cannot help you with your timesheet. And because you're certifying it um, as being true, I want the employee to do it. I don't feel comfortable certifying on your behalf. 
I'll meet with you and walk you through it, but I want you doing the certification and submitting it. And then Tessa, what is the supervisor responsibilities for leave approval in the portal if, if the person is primarily working with HR? What I have been doing is sending the, the supervisor a note saying, it's okay for you to approve so-and-so's leave, I've met with them. So the supervisor still does need to approve the timesheet, but I will let you know that it's okay to approve because I can also look at it. Okay, Jenna, can you clarify guidelines for the use of family leave staff paid into 2023? I'm not sure I understand Jenna's question. Jenna, can you come off mute and explain oh, the question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, I think I've heard of people um, starting to use family leave as of like January of this year. Can you clarify a little bit of those guidelines of who would be eligible to use starting now? Sure, it is. It's um, any employee um, who is paid um, uh, a wage from CU. There is a small group and um, I, I talk in terms of job codes. And so Kim, I'll kind of look to you. It's a 3,200 job code. They are um, very specific stipends for grad students. It's a bit like, again, a very specific um, group that's not, but pretty much everyone else at CU um, is eligible to start taking leave January 1. Um, so anytime they have a, a need, they can apply. Um, the contributions we all pay in, um, is um, they call it a social insurance program. So we're paying it in just like any insurance. Um, so you're entitled to use it when you need it, but it's not yours. Um, it really goes into that pool and that's how we're paying these claims. Okay, and we have very few, they're not call, um, job code 3200. So we have some 3205s. Um, Anne asks, can you use short-term disability before using vacation time, i.e. for parental leave after the initial 12 weeks? So um, the answer to that specific is no, because parent um, short-term disability only covers the birth parent, and they're only going to cover six weeks for um, a regular um, delivery and eight weeks for a cesarean. And so that all falls within that first 12 weeks that they're going to uh, to make sure the short-term disability is used for. Um, and when you think about that disability, um, you know, they're they're providing the the recovery time for that birthing parent only. It's not um, parental leave per se for bonding or anything else. So it's gonna be in that first um, six to eight weeks, which is where family is going to run as well. I don't see any, uh, does anyone have other, that, those are the only questions in the chat. Um, anyone can feel free to come off mute if you have um, other questions. Um, while you're thinking about your questions, and if you have more, I'll just give you a few stats. We did cross over 1,100 applications for all of CU um, in the last few weeks. So people are utilizing this, and they're putting their applications in. We, um, you, If you can, we are uh, the rules really state you should be putting your application in um, 30 days before. Um, However, um, if there's an emergency, you know, if you think car accidents or anything else, um, anyone is able to, you know, go out on leave, work with your supervisor that you can't come in and then do the paperwork um, retroactively. So um, we just say, get it in as soon as you can. If anyone is incapacitated, um, Kim uh, can absolutely help and do um, applications on your behalf, um, you know, to um, working with your family members or anybody um, who, who knows your situation. So um, lots of um, uh, flexibility there. Um, when you put in your application, um, your supervisor will be notified. So um, again, we're... <laughs> probably talk to your supervisor and have that relationship, you know, that they will be notified of that application that's coming in. Um, we have about 450 employees who took active leave in January. Um, again, this is across CU. Um, and so those are the ones that were processing their payroll um, and running a ton of queries to make sure everything's working on our end. Um, the nice thing with leave 
and pay is we can make it right fairly quickly. <laughs> um, so again, if something, if you're seeing something that's not right on your paycheck, please let us know. And we will, you know, really try and troubleshoot that for you and get it rectified as soon as possible. Um, we have a couple other questions. Um, yeah. Can you discuss intermittent leave and the reduced work schedule? Put my little buttons in the way. How many er intermittent claims can you submit? Sure. So um, family can be taken in consecutive leave, intermittent leave, or reduced schedule. And so intermittent is um, when your medical certification might come back that says you can take up to eight hours per week because of an X condition. So think migraine, something like that, right? They're going to give you a window where you might not use it, but if you need to, you can take up to that eight hours a week to deal with that condition. Um, so it, it, intermittent is definitely more um, ad hoc um, when something flares up, when something, um, when appointments come up, things like that. A reduced schedule um, tends to be when somebody um, is in parental leave, so think bonding, um, or that some mental health um, reasons why um, you might not be able to work a full week, and so they reduce your schedule, and you can use leave for that other time. So a reduced schedule, um, and forgive me, I don't know if um, you work all kinds of different shifts, but if you're working four tens and um, you're um, taking time off for parental leave, and you know you're you have your consecutive leave that you do when they're newborn, and then you want to come back um, temporarily or part time basis, you can use family for ten hours a week and work those thirty, and that extends the time you can use family because you get that while it's 12 weeks, if you start using it in smaller increments, um, it's basically, we look at it as 480 hours for the year. And so um, that's where um, reduced schedules come in. So, and then how many claims you can submit, really you submit a claim for each condition. And that's then we're gonna rely on your medical certification from your medical provider that's telling us how much you can work, when you can work, any restrictions like you have on that. So that's really what's going to dictate, um, you know, how how we decide if it's consecutive, intermittent, or reduced schedule. And then, of course, working with you. Um, if you have multiple issues uh, or cases, so there's, I have a, a serious health condition that I need a case for, I would submit that. But then I want to take care of my mother for a serious health condition. That would be a separate case. And then we would, um, so you would have two open cases in our system and um, you could use, but you don't get more allotment. You still get those 480 hours or 12 weeks for the year um, for both of those cases. So. Carlo asks, I applied for family and FMLA already, but we'll be taking off in July. When should I be receiving my leave letter? Um, if your leave was put in and um, there's a future date, we are trying to triage and make sure anyone who has leave right now is getting the service. Um, uh, so I will say that in the next month or so, we will have a better process and catch up on this. So I do apologize if you're not hearing right away, um, but we are, if there's a leave date that's out um, into the future, um, we are um, trying to make sure that the people who have leave right now are getting um, service quickly. So I don't have an exact answer, but if you don't hear um, probably in the next month, um, please let me know and we can make sure that happens. Okay. Can you use intermittent family and short-term disability? Yes. If short-term disability um, uh, recognizes whatever's going on, um, yes. So again, though, short-term disability is only going to pay the difference that family does not. So um, depending on your percentage that you get from family, short-term disability may or may not be useful to you. Okay, I'm going to skip a question, come back to it, but jump to the, the other one from the same person. Do you have to apply for short-term disability before applying for family? No, short-term disability um, is uh, th still through our third party. So it's with the standard uh, and it, that's a separate vendor. So you would apply directly to short-term disability. I would recommend doing it at the same time and talking with Kim and the leave team to make sure, um, you know, that 
we know you're anticipating to use short-term disability, um, but short-term disability, they provide you a check. So they're going to cut you a check directly for a certain amount of money. And then on the back end, we have to reconcile your leave and make sure that you weren't overpaid from that um, short-term disability payment and just make sure everything's right on our side. So it doesn't quite matter um, the timing. Um, if you're just, you know, if you just let us know that you're doing um, that application as well, that helps us plan. Can they put, can we put notes in the, um, on the, the family application? Is that a good place to say I'm also applying for STD or is there a better way to communicate that? Um, we, if, yeah, I think so. I think anywhere we can say that, that would be great. Um, and I will go back and check um, our application and the process to see if we have any kind of indicator on that. I don't think, you, I just filled one out this morning. I didn't, um, it didn't pop out to me, but okay. there were plenty of places to put notes. There were two options to put notes. Perfect. Okay. And I'm sorry, the little one is barking, but I want to read this other intermittent. I'm hearing you say it is best to use for medical, medical appointments, migraines, et cetera, for up to eight hours a week. How many weeks slash hours does this leave approval cover? I would say it covers whatever the doctor is recommending. Correct. So if your doctor is recommending up to two hours, two times a week, then that's what you can use. It's up to whatever the doctor fills out on the medical certification is what your intermittent leave will be approved at. Correct. And then um, total for the year or the duration of that case, you would have 480 hours um, available from family to use for that case. Okay, you oh, already answered that. Okay, there are no other questions in the chat. Again, feel free to come off mute if you have any questions you can't type that fast. And we will make the slides available to everyone. And then we'll also have the recording of the presentation and we'll let everyone know where that is. I'd like to get it put up, a link put in our HR hub. And um, so then everyone who missed the presentation will be able to go and look at it whenever they need. And then feel free also to reach out to me with any questions. And um, if we don't have any other questions, I'll give everyone a few seconds to ask more questions. And again, I'll thank everyone for your patience um, of working through this. We will become more efficient and the processes will get better. Um, as I said, that's um, the third party vendor that we're using. Um, we'll roll out our phase two. Um, hopefully we're hoping in April, which will allow employees to you know, get into that. We will provide the communication um, to everybody of how to do that. It will still be through your portal. Um, so right now, if you go into the portal application, you're being directed to what we call an on-base form, which is a, a different part uh, vendor. Um, you know, when we switch over, that tile will connect you into our what um, the company is called Absence Soft. And so, um, hopefully, for you, it will be seamless. But there will be you know changes in in that application that you land on. Um, and again, that will allow a little bit more. Um, uh, employee self-service, supervisor and HR visibility into the system. And so we're very excited um, to have that rolled out. I thought of one more question. When you say 12 weeks on the paid parental leave, um, are you referring then to weeks or hours? So like I turned in paid parental leave for some, or we had someone on paid parental leave and you're only reporting you're reporting family and paid parental leave. So the paid parental leave isn't at 100%. So is it the number of hours or is it the duration? So it's not the hours you're submitting. It's um, so paid parental leave is six weeks of 100% time. So there's not a an hour or dollar amount because it's different for everybody. So, so you're counting on a calendar, the number of weeks. Correct. And that you can spread that out. But yes, it would be um, six weeks of 100% time, whether you take that six weeks in a block, or you decide to take Thursday and Friday off every week for a certain amount of time, you would have, what, 30 days that you could do that for. Okay, I'll reach out to you on my specific question. Okay. Um, I do. I did have um, when we have an employee on leave, we hear from Kim when we can 
approve. Oh, was that just a statement, Rachel, or a question? Oh, yeah, you will you will hear from me that I've met with the employee and then it's okay to approve their timesheet if that's what you're asking. Okay, well, thank you everyone for coming and be sure to reach out if you have any questions and thank you, Lisa. And thank you for also answering all my other questions when I email you, I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank everyone. you. Bye. Thank you.